Well, every week we try to feature uh, a guest that provides a lot to uh, society and more, in this case, more knowledge. Because as we know, over the last year and a half, we've been fighting through this pandemic and now we have a vaccination available, multiple vaccinations available. And I thought, who would be the go-to guy to educate us? Because he's providing the clinical trial a vaccine right now. Not only that, he's a tremendous guy. So let me let me tee, tee it up for you, for you guys. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Edelglass has been a uh, has been in the medical field for several years. Is a cosmetic surgeon. Um, as I like to refer to him, is the guy that provides youth. I would I would categorize him as the youth fountain of youth whisperer, if you will. But not only that. Um, He's a brilliant guy. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he's started a company, a, a Research Your Health, which is really appropriate for what we're, we're getting ready to talk about. Um, business entrepreneur and is a trusted North Texas TV personality. Uh, so let me bring him in, Dr. Jeffrey Adelglass. Hey, Doc, hey, first of all, thanks for joining me. And uh, I know that was a mouthful, but I've known you for, my wife and I've known you for several years, and I just, it's hard to not... I got to do you justice when I introduce you. Thank you for all those kind words and kind words back to you and your wife. You're wonderful people. And it's been wonderful to know you. But these times, you know, you mentioned that we're in the middle of a pandemic. And that's true to a certain extent. But the way I look at it, this is really a war, a war that's never been fought before because the enemy is invisible. And as many of the enemies you knock out, there are more and more right behind them, getting stronger, different, a little sneakier and trickier. So we need to be as smart as they are. And as as you said before, and currently I am a cosmetic surgeon, and my goal in that was to help people look better, live longer, and enjoy fabulous lives like many of us do. Well, you do a tremendous job of that. I will tell you you that. Thank you. (laughs) I mean, pure beauty. And you're the epitome of a lot of just great things. But what has happened is right in the middle of all this, people come to me and say, I want to be good looking. I want to be vital. I want to be able to be intelligent. And right in the middle, we have a war that's distracting us with COVID. And it's distracting to everyone. So a lot of people ask me what I can do. What could they do? And so we started helping people by helping them to get vaccines to prevent them from getting sick. And in doing so, we have tried to participate in many clinical trials for different vaccines to help people look good, but also to live longer, live safer, and live happily. Um, So so real real quick, Dr. A, um, I... You mentioned the the clinical the the vaccination, and I know that uh, we were involved in the uh, the trial of vaccination. Uh, real quick, how did that perpetuate, and what is the whole process for that? As far as there's thousands of people that have to go through this trial, but uh, real quick, what what is the whole process of doing something uh, and bringing a trial vaccine and bringing it to the public for people to get the vaccination? Well, since this is brand brand new, we've never had a pandemic quite like this in in modern history. So what's involved is the work in the laboratory, and the one we worked on is for a company called Novavax, mm-hmm. and that is one that is uh, bioengineered, so there's no chance of getting COVID from it, and it works. In order to go to the FDA you need to vaccinate approximately 30,000 people 
so you can present evidence to the FDA. And Pfizer has done that. Moderna has done that. And other companies are also along the way. They're, they actually have emergency use authorization. And that's what Novavax is trying to do. And Novavax has shown above a 90% efficacy, meaning that 90% of the people have, have not gotten COVID or have done well. These things are still in clinical trials, but they're advancing. We've started off doing people or patients from 18 to above. And then we did a second trial, which is near complete for adolescents from 11 to 17. And what this means is that there will be other alternatives to the vaccines that are out there. And, you know, every, everyone has a sweet spot. Every vaccine is slightly different. And even though there are a lot of vaccines out there, there are so many products that compete with each other. And each one has a different hallmark. For example, let's take other industries. Some people like Coke and some people like Pepsi. Why that is? Personal preference. And there are little things. Some may be better in people who are a little bit older. Some people may do better in people who have certain um, sensitivities. So there is a place for everything. Also in storage and handling, Pfizer needs to be deep frozen and shipped deep frozen. Novavax can be shipped in a um, regular uh, regular uh, cool temperatures so we can send it to distant areas, things along those lines. But the important thing beyond all of this is that the we're far from over with COVID. It's go, the new Delta variant is coming to the United States. It will take over the entire rest of the space, over 80% of it, and it attacks younger, healthier people. And these people need to be vaccinated. And I can give you two or three reasons. Number one is they'll do better. They won't get sick. The long-term effects of the disease, of COVID-19, nobody knows. It's not been around long enough. So it's best to get vaccinated. The people will say, I'm 22. I don't need this. If I get sick a day or two, so be it. But do you know, do you know what a young man does the first day he gets sick? Very first day. Very first thing he does. Doesn't go he to calls the doctor. His mother. <laughs> he calls, no, he calls his mother. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Mom, I'm sick. What do I do? Exactly. And she said, oh, I'll, 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 be, I'll be right over. Let me bring you some food. Let me get you some drinks. The nurturing. Let me get you. And uh, every guy in America, that right. girl probably. Right. You know, that a girl say, yeah. no, no. And mom comes over, brings all this over, and then she gets sick. So even though you you feel you're Superman, and mm -hmm. you may be, your mom is not Superwoman. Your dad is not Superwoman. So you need to protect not only you, but your family and your friends. The second thing is these viruses duplicate and replicate. And as they replicate, you can never make so many of the same things. No matter how hard people try, there'll be ne never be another Tony Casillas, ever. God, I hope and not. Thing, God help same, us. God help <laughs> us. And, and, and that's why these viruses all replicate, and every once in a while they slip up and they have a new variant. So if we're going to knock this out, we have to knock out the disease. You know, and, and, and that's what the purpose of all this is. And Dr. A, there's a, you know, there's a question that uh, my executive producer, uh, Kim Francis, uh, before we started the show, and you just touched on it because of this other variant of the COVID, uh, you know, of COVID. And uh, a friend of hers uh, had a, a friend of, of hers uh, that, that got COVID, uh, that got the vaccination, excuse me, and just got COVID uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so I guess that's my question is that there's this other variant that, that people are going to have to get vaccinated um, to prevent that from again, perpetuating and, and try to vaccinate from that. 
So do you see another chain of vaccinations once you've been vaccinated to prevent you from getting the other strain that you may that may uh, be out there and we may be faced up against? The answer is they, they will continue to have variants until there's nothing to have a variant of. So that's why we need to knock it out. And all the people who are naysayers, and I understand that, no one wants to get an unnecessary vaccine. No one wants to take the risk. But to take the risk of getting the disease is far worse than getting the disease. So between getting the disease or getting the vaccination, I choose vaccination. And if you knock them all out, all the variants, you can't have a variant of something that doesn't exist. So when we talk about efficacy, in the Novavax trial, 90% of the people were helped. That leaves 10% of the people who are vaccinated. And to put it in football terms, you have an offense, the vaccine coming in, and you have the defense, the vaccine. They hit each other and they knock each other out and everyone falls to the ground and progress stops. However, just like in football, there's always one sneaky guy mm -hmm. who sneaks around the side and says, look at me, mm -hmm. I'm running the ball in. I'm taking the ball. And that's what happens with vaccines. You can vaccinate a lot of people, but there's always a sneaky little virus that gets around it. That's why we need more and more people so there's less room to sneak around and get behind the other team and score. And that that's why it's so important to say to all the naysayers, and I can't say this strong enough, please participate. Don't sit on the sidelines. Take a main seat. Get a box seat. Really play it and help not only yourself, your family, the future of our country, and the future of the world. Don't you want to see a better world, a productive world? I don't think there's anybody out there who would disagree with that. We all have different views, admittedly, but let's help everybody. We can fight about taxes. Let's fight about taxes but not, not about disease and health. Yeah, I think the health is something you got to put in the forefront. But there is a lot of people who had a lot of trepidation when it comes to getting the vaccine. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people that just very defiant for whatever reasons it may be, whether it's religious reasons or reasons or just the fact that they don't want to be forced to get the vaccination. And you just kind of hit on it. You know, your voice was, in that last, you, you, you know, that last answer I mean, what do you? What would you say to someone that has these this trepidation and really thinks that they don't want to get this because they don't need to get it? Well, you know, on an individual basis, there are some people who are very strong, very healthy, and possibly uh, could do okay without it. But it's but first of all, this vaccine knows no borders. That's why it's it's a war. It doesn't see age, money, color, anything. It strikes. It's an even. Um, it's an even player. It goes after everybody. But you, this is a time when you have to think about not only yourself, not only your team, but everybody. Because if you're playing football, for example, and you get it, you're in the locker room. You're with a lot of other guys, right? And then you're putting them in mm -hmm. danger. So think of them. And there's a lot of reasons why people don't do things. A hundred reasons why people don't do anything. But this is not about an individual mandate. No one wants to force you. I would expect if you, you can be in a position where you can safeguard those close to you, you would do it. Do it for, for the team. There are many things we do in life that we may not want to do. This is a difficult decision. No one takes it lightly, but it's so important for the world. And no, there's no other way to end this war. And if you look at proof, there is no one who can deny today that the number of people with COVID disease is down from what it was a few months ago. There's unmistakable evidence. 
And the only reason that is happening is because people are being vaccinated and people are taking the right choices. It is continuing because not everyone wants a vaccine. Not everyone wants to protect themselves and their loved ones. But eventually that it's going to happen because the people who vaccinate may be the only people left. Right. Right. So it, it can happen. Yeah. Um, and I know this is probably going to be, and I'm sorry, a lot of people ask you this question, but I'm going to ask sure. you anyway, um, as far as the, the process of this eliminating the COVID, I mean, and you, you probably can give an, I guess, a speculation, uh, answer to this, but, how long do you think this is going to last until we actually end the the COVID and really just where there's no it's it's not a threat anymore? Is this going to be take years? Is it two years? I mean, it's not. It seems to me it doesn't like it's not going to be a short term ordeal. It seems like it's be more long long term. But what do you what do you see as far as and speculate uh, when this can one day be under total control? I I think it is, all depends on each and every one of us to join the cause, put in some medical equity and have, get taking a vaccine not only helps the individual and helps everybody else, because if no one has it, let's say you go from every person being susceptible to one out of two. And if you get a one out of a hundred or three out of a hundred, it's not going to transmit. You have to transmit it to a person who, who is susceptible. So I think that in, in a period of time, not tomorrow, we've already missed the July um, uh, mandate by President Biden, but, it, but it's, it's getting better and better. But we're down to the last few. There's only um, the last few people to get vaccinated are always the hardest. The people who wanted it the most, were most at risk, were at the top of the list. And now they're the the stragglers who need to get on with it. And I think that's very, very important. You know, again, it's like in football. You can play the game all afternoon or all evening long. It's the last two, three minutes that make a difference. Listen to break, the, make it or break it. Listen to the head coach, Doctor A. That's you know, that's, that's <laughs> great advice right there. Um, and and you mentioned at the top of uh, when we started the started the the podcast is that you mentioned is thirty thousand people have to go through this trial vaccination. Where are you guys at right now as far as uh, being able to get closer to that number? Well, for our trial. I'm very happy to say that I um, vaccinated the most number of people in the world awesome. with this vaccine. So we are number one, unmistakable. Not one of not one of many, not one of the. We vaccinated more people than anyone in the world. So we're very happy with that. And this vaccine is closed. It's being submitted to the United States government mm -hmm. for approval. Mm -hmm. And I hope it gets approved. But there are other vaccines and there are other diseases. What we do is clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And we try to help people get better, feel better. And, you know, medicine is changing. It's ha and it has to change. And we're going from a illness society to a preventive society wouldn't you rather prevent the disease than suffer with it so that's what's happening with this vaccine is showing that we can knock out disease save lives save money and move on rather than wait to get sick and perhaps die Six hundred thousand americans have died from this disease and every one of us probably knows someone who died from this disease. That's a lot of people that right. died. And yeah. we have to prevent this not only from COVID, but we have a wide variety of vaccines that, and other medicines that we do clinical trials on for at research across some uh, research for health. Research for health is even doing filler and cosmetic studies. We're doing all sorts of different studies, not only for the preventative, but not only for the sick. We do the wide variety. 
because it's a research process to determine if things work. And it, it's like anything else. You need to be, to be a football player, you need to be an athlete first. Yeah, take, and, take care of your body and take advice yeah. from, from and, not only and, me, uh, but from Dr. A, hashtag go get vaccinated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and so you know, I'm not putting and, words and, in her mouth. I'm just no. I, I I really look and and I get in. Unfortunately, I get this argument. It's almost like politics with people, and I hate. I don't even like to talk about politics. But I have some people, friends, that are resistant to it, and I respect that. But I just don't. I don't want to get into it. I just that's that's my line. But, but, <laughs> but, 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 but. I I understand that, but but if these are your friends, I I understand that there may have been a political role in it, but there's no, in my opinion, and I'm an old time doc, and there is no politics in medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, who pays for it? How much? Who makes money? All that stuff, all true. But the end result at my level is to take care of patients. My job is to take patients and keep them healthy or, or help them get back on a road to health. There is no, no politics in that. Mm-hmm. We don't take any government money. It's all private money, private patients. And, the, you know, it's, it's if you know, we have a slogan here at Research Your Health. If it's results you want, it's experience you need. We've been, I've been doing this for over 30 years I understand the diseases. I under, even this so is a new disease. You build upon the foundation, and that's what's needed. And what, what, what? Where in politics does life and death have a place? The only pol- the only politics, the only team to be on is life. Period. If yeah. it's this party or that party, who cares? Life. Live long enough to vote. Well said. And vote well, in it however you want. Well said. Uh, well, let, let, let me get you to the following place. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Dr. A, every week I do a couple of segments on my show. And these questions I ask you really hard, and that's called X's and O's. And X's and O's is presented by Dr. Matt Chalmers of Chalmers Wellness in Frisco, Texas. All right. Like I said, these are difficult. These are life. This is life stuff. Okay, this is really serious stuff. <laughs> LLL. Uh, I'm going to ask you this. So you're a plastic surgeon, uh, cosmetic, uh, yeah. and you deal yes. with, uh, you grant people wishes that want to look better and feel better about themselves. Um, so my first question, what is the most requested procedure besides Botox? Because I think Botox is probably the number one maintenance people request when they come see you. Yes. And Botox is coming back with a vengeance. You know, during the height of the pandemic, everyone wore a mask. So Botox is coming back. Lay um, fillers to fill in where Botox left, uh, left off, for example, in lips and lines and things along those. The next is skin facial uh, procedures, chemical peels, facials, microdermabrasion. And then, of course, the summer is coming. And you know what that means. What does that mean, that, Dr. A? <laughs> that means we all want to look, look our best at the swimming pool. Well, I wish we had a notion. We'd even have more people. But we, we're, we're subject to swimming pools. So everyone, everyone wants to have something done. And it's a great time to do it. Um, and, you know, relating that back, there are more and more diseases coming. We're working on newer uh, vaccines and things because uh, a lot of diseases are transmitted by mosquitoes. And we're about to enter or are entering mosquito season as we go to bodies of water and um, not don't have all our protective clothing so on. So would that be West Nile? Is that is that the leading disease spread by mosquitoes? West, right now it is, but mm-hmm. there's some other ones. There's one called chicken ganya that's coming mm-hmm. about. Um, and we have a lot of different diseases 
that are mosquito born. So we need not only to protect ourselves from the mosquitoes, but there are medicines and vaccines for these things as well. So we have to stay ahead. The biggest problem we have with coronavirus or COVID is that we were caught short. No one knew about it, no one cared about it, and no one acted fast enough because we didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if we had anticipated it, we would have done a lot better. And now we're looking at this, and I think everyone knows we're going to have a lot of mosquitoes this summer. Yeah, I, unfortunately. I mean, that, that, that's an absolute fact. I don't, you know, if you're a Republican or a Democrat, I think everyone's going <laughs> to vote mosquitoes. I'm not even going to touch you know, that. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a song I sing to my granddaughter. It's called No Me Moleste Mosquitos. You know what? They love this brown skin, too. For some reason, it's just oh, like honey for mosquitoes. Uh, Let me tell you that. I think they love all this pigment. Sweet, I mean, does pigment sweet, have sweet does pigment sweet have meat. does pigment have anything to do with mosquito bites? I'm just curious. No, no. I don't think so. I, I think it's just sweet, sweet meat. <laughs> sweet meat. All right. Well, I got one more for you. Uh, what is the weirdest um, request that someone's ever come into your office that may have had too much done? Uh, where you just said, "Look at him," said, "Look, I." I can't help you out anymore. Well, I, I think there's um, there's always a place. Because I watch that show in, botched you know, every once in a while. I don't know if you've seen that before. Yes, but, yeah. I have. Yeah. You know, but if a, a little is good, more oh, in, a, in many of our eyes is better. And there's a saying in medicine, excellence is the enemy of good. And, you know, you get people to look fabulous, absolutely fabulous, but they think they need more. And it's very hard to convince people that you can't, you can't go to 110%. 100% is good. And everyone, there's definitely a competitive advantage. And let's say you look, you're a 10.5. Everyone loves you someone didn't ask you out or do this or do that you want to go to 11 and you try to make them an 11 and they go back to a six that's a great because perspective it, there because they had too much it, done it, right they had too much done yeah so stay at a 10.5 yeah you can't go beyond that that's great and advice. Everyone, every everyone wants the ultimate goal but get close yeah 10.5 on a 10 scale is good yeah, that's, very good. Uh, absolutely, uh, ten and a half, uh, uh, nine and a half, eight and a half. I think if you're in that range, you're good. Uh, I know your beautiful wife, uh, Barbara. You guys uh, uh, have traveled quite a bit. I mean, you've traveled or like to travel, I would think. But if there's one place that you could go that you haven't been to, where would that be? Oh, probably Australia. I would oh, love yeah. to go to Australia. Nice, you know. You know what's good about some of this? Uh, as a doctor, and people don't realize that I um, live with my phone. I live in constant contact with people, family, patients, all of the above. There's, there's always something going. And Australia is far enough away that I don't think my <laughs> phone will work there. <laughs> so I love to be someplace where no one can find me. Just get off the grid. Off the grid. You may have to go so, farther than Australia. Be- to get off the grid, you may have to go to the moon or someplace because well, for some reason that I'm phone gonna put, is. <laughs> I'm going to put my name on the list. I, I got to earn the money to get on, on one of those space flights. Uh, I'm going. Wine or beer or scotch? Uh, uh, wine. Wine. Champagne. Champagne. What's your favorite champagne? Oh, uh, right now, probably um, Moet Chandon. Nice. That's good taste, right? It's there. good. I, I, you know, real, um, real quick, what do you recommend as far as uh, not only just women, because women, you know, they look beautiful, but men as far as moisturizer for, you know, taking care of your skin and, and getting out in the sun? What do you recommend for a moisturizer? Because, man, I'm all about man beauty. Give me some tips on um, that. I, th- I think the biggest, the biggest tip is to don't go even on shady days or over. Overhang- over- cast days 
to have some sunscreen on. And most of the good sunscreens um, have moisturizers in them. And it's so important because we're seeing such an uptake of skin cancers of the um, basal cell and now of the melanomas. So we really need to protect ourselves, look good, look moist, and look fabulous. I mean, um, and hopefully um, we'll have some creams and things to prevent mosquito bites. <laughs> Keep yourself safe. I love that. Be careful. Yeah. I, Don't let anyone bite you. Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of hard. Like I said, that brown skin, just, it's like sugar and sugar and honey. Oh. All right, second segment <laughs> we do on our show is called Ben's Worthy. Binsworthy is presented by the University of Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner, Work Sooner program. So appreciate those folks of sponsoring this segment. All right, so I am going to talk to you about something that I've been watching on Netflix. And it's been around for a while. And there's also another one I want you guys to check out if you like to fish. The first one is the House of Cards, and I know you guys are thinking, man, House of Cards and Kevin Spacey, all the things that happen. Hey, look, I'm not even going to go there. I just think it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, series on Netflix, but let me tell you, the last season, excuse me, I believe that's the, whenever, if you haven't watched it, just turn your head. When Francis Underwood, uh, the president, which would be... Claire Underwood, which is played by Robin Wright, who does a tremendous job. So first of all, I love the show because it's all nothing but great acting. I mean, this is some really just unbelievable acting and just the script and the way it's written. But anyways, I went back to it. It's always like you got you go back to your go-to thing, right? You know, these things that just kind of keep you intrigued. But I watched the last episode last night, and I thought Francis Underwood was bad, conniving, Dirty politician, but man, let me tell you, Claire Underwood, wow. I mean, it is a tremendous, tremendous series. So I am going to recommend to you, if you have not watched The House of Cards, because you cannot w- possibly watch 500 program programs on Netflix or whatever you're on, whatever app you're on, you got to check it out. So I went to that. But the ending is just amazing, man. It's just, God, I had to go. I, I forgot about it. So it's kind of like things you go back to, and there's nothing wrong with going back and watching something again. Um, I think there's always those shows that, that really just have this perpetual effect on you, but check that out. And also, I got another one for you, because I'm one of those fishermen that, man, I'm like a wannabe guy, but Wicked Tuna, man, it's all about going out there and fishing these big-ass tuna. Yeah, I said big-ass tuna, because they are huge. We're talking four, 500-pound tuna, and it's just amazing how they produce this show and 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 let me just tell you this. The first time that I ever caught a fish of that size was a yellowfin tuna when I had the chance to go on a shipping, um, did a shipping outing. Excuse me, not a fish. I went on a, went on a boat and, and <laughs> did, uh, we went fishing and, with a guide. I'll get it out. And I caught a 100-pound yellowfin tuna. And I thought this thing was a semi truck trying to pull out the bottom of the ocean. I mean, it was that big and rugged. So to watch that show, it's just make it's it's they make it look easy, but it's really nice to watch. So if that's something you're into, man, make sure you check that out. Man, what a great show! As I mentioned earlier, uh, Doctor Ada Glass, tremendous uh, job at just informing us about the the COVID coronavirus and uh, the uh, COVID vaccination and vaccine and. Uh, people that have the questions about it. I thought it was just a wealth of knowledge. So th- a big thank you to him. Does a tremendous job. Keep up the great work, my man. Uh, I want to remind everyone, um, you can watch our show on Facebook Live. Uh, you can subscribe to it on the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you share it. Uh, like the show. Comment during the show. We're so excited about having you and uh, joining us every week. And we, we make this fun. I mean, this is what this is all about. It's informal fun. I mean, certainly if I'm the host, I mean, it's, you never know which direction it's going to go. So, uh, again, really appreciate you guys tuning in every week. And, uh, and one of the things uh, I want to remind you, if you will, just make sure you share the show um, and then comment. I mean, whether you like it or not or something, questions you want to ask every week, me or whoever it may be uh, on our upcoming guest, because uh, that's one thing we're going to try to put out there, kind of the upcoming shows. And we – we, uh, we we uh, tape our shows and record our shows, and um, so we're going to try to keep it more live where you can comment, so make sure you do that, and really appreciate you guys tuning in. And uh, 
So to make sure you come back next week, uh, as you know, we always try to get the best guests and never know who we're going to have on our show. Also, I want to make uh, sure I give a big shout out to our executive producer, Kim Francis, and our great producer behind the glass with MZ Studios, Spider. Man, who loves spiders and snakes? I hate snakes, and I like spiders. Anyway, until next week, as always, te amo. Te amo.